All right, so we're going to start this by disassembling the action. We'll remove the stack from the keyframe so that we can prepare the keys in these key clamps so that we can recondition the key bushings, those little pieces of felt that keep the key quiet on its rail uh, rather than hearing wood on metal. So we'll recondition them by applying a material called Profelt, which sizes it and lubricates it. So we're gonna measure the key pins on the balance and front rail to have the correct dimensions so that we can use the proper calls for the key bushings, the front and balance rail. Then we'll apply this Pro Felt material to the felt and it soaks in and puffs up the felt. Then we can place the call, which sizes it to the same size as the pin. And we will leave these calls in place overnight so that the material will cure out, it'll dry up, but it leaves behind a lubricant. So then the felt has less friction on the key pin and it fits it nice and tight. And we'll do the same process to the balance rail that we did to the front rail. If the bushings are old and worn enough, then we have to replace all of the key bushings, but this set is good enough to just recondition, thus reconditioning. Most people know that you should have your piano tuned regularly, but reconditioning a piano action is also a very important part of piano maintenance, and it's often overlooked. It's basically a machine made of wood with felt and leather, and all those parts change over time, and so they require maintenance. Okay, now that these are done, we'll let the keys sit overnight so that that can cure out, and in the meantime, we will prepare the key frame, which has all the key pins on it. They'll need to be polished. We use um, a brass polish material, that works very well. And then after they're polished and cleaned, we will lubricate them with a dry film lubricant. Okay, so now we're going to polish the key pins. We use a material that works real well for cleaning brass and metals, it's called Flitz. And uh, it does a great job of really removing all the gunk, all the, uh, you know, buildup that are on these pins. And so we want to polish them well, and then we clean the polish off before we apply a dry film lubricant to them. And uh, you can see the difference. This is after, and this is before. You can really see the difference just by looking, but more importantly, you can feel the difference. They're nice and smooth. In the meantime, we'll also be filing the hammers. As you can see here, the old string grooves on the top there. So we remove those. Here's the ones I've done. And then these are the before. You can see the deep grooves and how flat the crown is. So we're really reshaping the hammer to its, uh, the original shape that you get with new hammers. And that greatly improves the tone. A piano player presses a key and a hammer hits a string and we hear music. But there's a lot going on between pressing the key and the hammer striking the string. The piano action is a series of moving parts that all function together. They give the piano player a great range of dynamics on the instrument when they're working as they are intended. Now we'll take the keyframe outside to apply the dry film lubricant to the pins because you want a well ventilated area and we want to make sure that we coat the sides of the pin uh, is the most important part of the surface because that's where the bushings are. So we actually apply the McLube um, on the balance rail and the front rail uh, paying particular attention to get the sides of the key pins. Not only do we lubricate the key pins with this material, uh, also the action studs that are in the key frame that rub on the key bed as you use the action shift pedal. 
And then we uh, also lubricate the action stack. We blow out all of the dust that, uh, you know, the hammer filing and all that created. And then we apply the McLube material to the uh, repetition levers, balance ears, and we also apply it to the jack. That's the boot-shaped part. Uh, so anything really that contacts another surface, uh, if it's a, a plastic or a metal part, wooden part, uh, if it's touching felt or leather in the process of playing the key, then we lubricate it to reduce friction. Okay, so the next day we remove the calls from the keys. The key bushings, they've had enough time for the material to cure out. And uh, so they're dry, but the lubricant is left behind and the surface of the felt is flatter than it was before because it was grooved from the key pen. Same with the front rail. You can see that those look very nice. And of course we also clean the key tops and then we'll also polish the cap stands the same way we did to the key pins with the brass polish and then lubricate them. There are many aspects of an action reconditioning and regulation job that we can't include in a short video. For instance, all the parts have to be properly aligned as a foundation and all the keys have to be perfectly level at the proper height and travel the same distance as each other. The center pins and the moving parts all have to be tested for the proper amount of friction. So now that we have polished and lubricated the cap stands, we'll move on to the next step of the process where we recondition the back checks. These are on the back of the key and they catch the hammer tail as you play it. And so these are covered with leather and the leather is where the wooden hammer tail catches on it, or checks, as we say, so it's called the back check. So we're reconditioning the leather by using this fine bristle brush, and uh, we're smoothing it out and roughing it up at the same time, really. You know, once we do this, during the regulation process, we'll align them, but it's important to start with a good foundation on the, the leather surface there. In addition to the back checks, we'll also do that to the knuckles. Uh, that's a wooden core uh, with some felt and then covered with leather. And they're very firm. And what happens is they get grooves in them over time. So we rough them up with the brush and then we smooth them out with a very fine sandpaper strip. So you're making it smooth yet firm. Afterwards, then we apply a Teflon powder as the lubricant on the leather. Just kind of work it into the nap. 88 times. So it gives it a, a firm surface, but friction free where the jack and repetition lever touch it. Also, on the bottom of the stack, this is upside down, we have the contact cloth. That's where the cap stands touch. When you press the key, it lifts the whipping by touching that felt contact cloth. So those get a little indented. So we'll clean them up with the brush, and then we'll apply the Teflon powder to them too. And there's one more spot of felt that we like to do this procedure on, and that is the let off button. That's where the jack touches. Next, we'll ease the keys on the balance rail on the keyframe. Every key has the uh, mortise with the felt bushing, and the bottom of the key has the round hole that sits on the pin. So we've reconditioned the felt, and you can see the hole. And if you have rebushed a set of keys or reconditioned them, either way, you should follow it up with the fine tuning, so to speak, of easing the key balance rail hole to make sure it fits snug, but not too snug, whereas it causes friction.
So in testing, the key should fall on its own weight from the front. And if it doesn't, that means there's too much friction and therefore we need to ease that balance reel hole a little bit. We don't want any movement front and back. And here's one that needs a little easing. Just push the tool through a little bit, basically compressing the wood slightly and put it back on and retest it. A piano key is really the link between a musician and the music they create. And the condition of the parts on the other end of that piano key significantly affect the ability of a player to reach their full potential. At the piano, we took string height measurements. We can use those numbers and simulate a string height here in the shop with this handy jig. This particular piano, the bass strings, are at 8 and 1 16th inches. So then we'll place the jig right over the hammers. This way we have a visual of what would be the piano string. Several of the regulation adjustments require knowing that distance. So we can set the hammer blow distance and let off and drop and other things. Um, certain things like key leveling, it's not really necessary to have that jig, but we'll be at the piano to do those. So this ruler here can help us along with the jig in setting our hammer blow distance. But before we get into that, I want to work the parts a little because we have been doing this reconditioning and a lot of the felt's puffed up. And so now we want to play through and kind of get things to settle down because we're going to be making very fine adjustments. So this straight edge helps us to see a straight line from one side of the section to the other as we set the distance. Unlike a lot of musicians who can tune their own instrument, say a violin or a guitar, most piano players don't work on their own pianos. So they rely on technicians to keep their instrument tuned properly, but also to keep it functioning to the best of its ability. These capstans that we polished and lubricated earlier is what we use to adjust the blow distance or the distance from the hammer to the string. So we're using our straight edge and our gauge to see them clearly and if we want to raise or lower a hammer we use a specialty tool that fits into the capstan and turns it up or down. And we kind of play through and double check things. This adjustable let off button allows us to choose when we want the hammer to let off or to let the jack escape from underneath the knuckle. So we want it to be pretty close to the string. That one's a little too close. We're looking for about two millimeters. That one looks pretty good. After let off, we set the drop. They kind of work together. So after it lets off, the hammer drops a little bit. And if it drops too much, you can really feel that in the playing. And so we're looking for about the same distance, about a sixteenth of an inch or two millimeters for the hammer to just slightly drop after the let off. So we use this little regulator screw here to raise or lower the amount of drop. So I can bring it down to show you uh, an example. That's too much drop. You would really notice that playing it. And that's about right. 
Next, we'll set the back check alignment to the hammer tails. So those back checks have to be spaced properly to the hammer tail. And we'll use wire bending pliers on the wire that the back check is mounted on. So we can squeeze at the bottom of the wire to move the back check to the left or right, and then opposite direction will bend the top of the wire to square it up. And then double check the alignment. That one looks like it could go over a little more, so we'll do that same process again to refine it. A little bit to the left, and then square it up, and double check. That looks good. And then we'll also set the back check height by bending the wire back or forward later. Another important step of the regulation process is setting the spring tension per note. As I play the key, you can see the hammer check, and as I let off, the hammer bounces up. That shows me the strength of the spring. This one has none, really, so I will grab the spring inside the whipping and pull it out to strengthen it, and then test again. So now it's bouncing. Okay, that one's a bit strong. You can see the hammer actually bounce up after it is in check. So when I release the key, it bounces up. So I want to decrease the spring tension on that one. So pull the spring out of its slot and bend it down and then check again. That was maybe a bit much, so I'll open it back up again. That's better. That's maybe a tad strong, so one more little bend to decrease the tension. And uh, that's pretty good. A little bit more. Firm it up, that feels better. You can actually feel it even more so than seeing it. After the bench regulation is complete, it's time to put the action back in the piano. That's the best place for the final adjustments of a regulation. Also, you'll want the piano to be tuned and voiced. Voicing procedures would include making sure the strings are level and that the hammers are mated properly to the strings so that they strike all of them simultaneously. Sometimes it's necessary to do some needling to the hammers for consistent tone throughout the keyboard range. Also, it's important to make sure the dampers are timed properly. They should lift at precisely the same time with each key, and they should all lift at the same instant when using the pedal. Hopefully this has helped you understand how piano actions work and why it's important to keep them in good condition if you want to get the most enjoyment out of your piano.